Facebook and Instagram. How are you? Checking in. It is a very casual day for me. My husband has taken the last two mornings of school runs and heavy lifting so that I could just be at home resting, preparing for uh, this tour that we have coming up, the Power Moves Tour. I wanted to come on here to talk to a very specific group of people, okay? So we're going to tell whether or not this live is for you. Are you listening? I want to have a moment to talk to people who have experienced inner transformation. You have changed the way you think. You've changed the way that you show up in the world. You are finally getting to a place where you are comfortable with who you are at your core. Maybe your core has gone through some work. You've done some therapy. You've been in your word. You've been praying and you finally feel that inner transformation. But you are wondering, how do I take what's happened inside of me and begin to introduce it to what's happening in my world and my relationships? I want to talk to people who have done the work. I see someone said, no, not me. Someone said, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You guys are welcome to stay. Okay. Um, <laughs> someone said, thank you for keeping me in line, babe. I am honored to serve you in your journey. Okay. I want to talk to someone who is wondering what happens when you begin to change so rapidly, so quickly that you no longer understand how you fit in the places you were once comfortable. A lot of times we do not make change. We do not have transformation because we are so afraid that we are going to have to switch up our friendships, switch up the people who we've come to know and love. And as a result of that, we are inwardly different, but we're still showing up in a way that has made other people comfortable. Like we're laughing at things that we really don't want to laugh at. We're going to things maybe that we really don't want to go to because at the end of the day, we have changed, but we don't know how to to introduce that change into our world. Your Highness says that that's how I'm feeling right now. I am bear, I am Amber says, talk to me. Chandra says, chat. Okay, listen, I was reading a part of the book, my book, Power Moves. If you haven't ordered it, ordered it, I need you to go on Amazon. Barnes and Noble has it 25% off. I need you to go on Barnes and Noble. I need you to go on Amazon and I need you to order this book because we are not just having another book about what to do with your insides. This is a book to help you take what's happened on the inside and introduce it to your outside. How do I introduce it to my friendships? How do I begin to change the way that I speak? How do I allow myself to begin to express what's taking place on the inside of me? So I want to read to you all something in this book. First of all, I, this is the analogy I use for these types of people. If you are this person where you have undergone an inner transformation, but you still don't know how to walk it out in the context of your friendships, the context of your relationships, this is the, this is the analogy I want to give you. The analogy is this. Imagine a house undergoes renovation. This house undergoes renovation and it's got new flooring. You change the paint color, new appliances, knocked out some walls. Like you completely have undergone a transformation on the inside of the house, but you never move into the house. So the inner transformation is when we do the renovation, but living out that renovation is when we begin to live into the house that has been renovated. I don't know who you are, but I feel like there is someone on this live, there is someone connected to the message of this book that has undergone the inner transformation, but you're not living in it. You're not living in that renovation. You're not living in that renewed mindset. You're not living in the demands of what that identity requires of you. I want to help you do that in a way that is not intimidating. I want to help you do that in a way that does not force you to betray yourself. I want to help you do that in a way that honors the fact that there are people who you value in your world, but that you aren't necessarily sure how to introduce that transformation. So I want to read this part of the book to you, okay? So this is what's happening to you. I want to give you language. In this part of the book, I use that very analogy about living in a home that has been renovated. And it says, soon you'll begin to experience an alignment that can only occur when God's word in your life are speaking the same thing. Can we take a minute? Can we take a minute and talk about 
what happens and look at first of all when we talk about the book like this isn't even halfway through the book in which i am showing you some of the tools that allow you to begin to live a life of an al of alignment so that you can walk out the very thing that god has placed in your spirit okay um so it says soon you'll begin to experience an alignment that can only occur when god's word and your life are speaking the same thing You'll notice that the alignment plugs the holes where power was being drained and releases the clamp where power was being stalled. I cannot wait for you all to get this book. When you and God start speaking the same thing about who you are, when you and God start speaking the same thing about what's possible for you, when you and God start speaking the same thing about your boundaries, when you and God begin to speak the same thing, you are in alignment. That alignment allows for power to flow. That alignment is when we are connected with the all powerful. We have cleared the tunnel and said, God, I want to make sure that I am aligned with who you say that I am. That was the hardest thing for me to do. That's why I start the first part of this book talking about what it feels like to be powerless. One of the hardest things for me to do was to get to a place where I was speaking the same thing about my life that God was speaking. I can remember thinking like, you're not good enough. You're not smart. You're dumb. You're never going to be anything like you're not one of the good girls. You don't make good decisions. There's you can. There's no way you could be anointed. There's no way that God could ever use you. These are things that were living in my mind. But the moment I began to say, I just want to, by faith, begin to speak the same things about my life that God says to me about me. That is when I begin to see a shift in my life. I began speaking the same things and then believing. How do I know that I'm believing that the name of this book, I see you, Julia, is called Power Moves, Ignite Your Confidence and Become a Force. You can order it Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever books are sold. When I began to walk that out, it didn't necessarily mean that I was like moving into ministry. It didn't mean that I was building a platform. It meant that my insides were coming to a place of wholeness. My insides were coming to a place where I could receive God's grace for my life, where I felt like, you know what? I may have gone through X, Y, and Z, but at the end of the, um, oh, I got to share y'all something that happened to me in my prayer time. I may have gone through X, Y, and Z, but at the end of the day, God still says I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. That hasn't changed anything the way that hasn't changed the way that God feels about me. That hasn't changed what God says about me. And how do I know this? Because all throughout scripture, we see God talking to his chosen people. And when God is talking to his chosen people, his chosen people, he never changes his mind about them. They're still chosen. Even when they were worshiping other idols, they were still, oh, I don't know who needs to hear that. You were still chosen. Even when they were asking for a king, when he was saying, listen, I'm good enough to just be your God. You don't need a king. He still didn't change his mind about them. Even when they were in captivity, sometimes because of their own choices and sometimes because of their punishment, my mind has not changed about you, says God. Why is it important that we get to a place where we recognize that God hasn't changed his mind about us is because if we are going to have what we need from a spiritual level to be who we need to be on the earth from the inside out, we have to be connected to God's vision for our life. We have to be connected to what God says about our lives. Power can only flow through you when you are connected to the all powerful. But what keeps us from connecting to the all powerful? Our thoughts, our fears, other people's expectations, the Fear that it's going to create a demand on our life that we may not be able to live up to. And so where we should be flowing in God's power, now we're stuck. We're flowing in shame. We're flowing in fear. We're flowing in rejection, flowing in abandonment. But the moment you begin to change your mind, the moment you begin to believe by faith that what God says about you is true, you will see that the power of fear has to lose its hold. You will see that the power of rejection has to lose its hold. And so my job is to help you. One of the things that I am doing in this book is to help you identify what is clamping your flow. What is standing in the flow of you being able to believe what God says about you, to believe that your life is not random, to believe that you were born to be a force? This book is so important to me because I know that we live in a culture where we think everyone is special or more special than we are, but we question our own identity. We question our own uniqueness. I am here to let you know that you were born to be a force. 
you have a feeling that you can break a generational curse. You have a feeling that the idea that God has given you was more than just an idea. It is a game changer. You have a feeling that you are not supposed to be on a bench, that you are supposed to be in the game wreaking havoc. You have that feeling. That feeling is God keeping you anchored to a truth that you were born to be a force. I know that you've been hurt. I know that you are a force amongst other forces. I talk about that in the book, the reality that we are a force amongst forces. And sometimes those forces are working together together with us. And sometimes those forces are working against us, but neither of those change the fact that you are a force. We have to get back to our identity of being a force because this world is in desperate need of people who are willing to say, I have experienced the goodness of God. I am walking out God's vision for my life and it will radically change your world too. We need more people who are aligned with God's vision because we have a real world to change. We got real curses to break. We have a real light that needs to shine in this world. Can you imagine how many other people are in this world who have gone through what you have gone through and they don't believe that anything is possible, but because you are on the other side, because you are clawing your way through the finish line, you know that there is still hope that awaits them. You recognize that God has not given up on them. I wish we could have testimony service in here for a minute. If we could have testimony service in here for a minute, we would be able to share our stories in such a way that people understand that I have been slayed. I have been hurt. I have been betrayed. And yet I have still seen the goodness of God show up in my life. I have still been able to do things that should not have been possible based off of what I once thought about myself, based off of what other people said about me. God has still positioned me to become someone that I had no business becoming, but because I was born as a force and I finally began to believe what God said about me, I saw things shift. I know that there are people watching this and you're probably not a reader. I don't really read books. You know, sometimes they don't keep your attention. I am telling you to stretch your yourself out of your comfort zone and begin to read this book, to read this book with an open mindset about what God wants to show you about who he's always known that you are. You were born to be a force and you cannot expect to change an industry. You cannot expect to change your family. You cannot expect to introduce wholeness and to seek the type of holiness and sanctification that is connected to us being made in the image of God if you do not know that you are a force. Yes, there's an audio version. I'm reading the audio book and it's available now. I'm talking about this book, my book, Power Moves, Ignite Your Confidence and Become a Force. Um, okay, so I, I was reading and then I just got thrown off. Okay, so um, many people want to be used by God, but not enough people want to be prepared by God. Jesus did not go from Mary's womb to the stranger's tomb in the same day. Over a course of time, he underwent a process that allowed his impact to be undeniable. It's not just that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. It's that Jesus became obedient to a process, even obedient to death, that required 30 years of patience in order to become. This is my favorite part. Are you ready? Okay. A life spent doing the work so that we can be fit to be used by God is powerful. But our life is not supposed to end in preparation. Our life is not supposed to end in preparation. That, that's why I said this live is for people who have been preparing, 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 preparing. Oh, I'm just getting ready. I'm just getting ready. But you have not been activated. I want to talk to somebody who has had enough preparation. It's time for you to activate. But you are afraid of what activation will look like. It would be like renovating and cleaning a home where no one is allowed to live. It's time for you to begin living in this new space. You are moving out of the undercover stage that preparation requires. You have to go through an undercover stage that is preparation. You have to go through that. Not everyone has access to you in those moments. You're not always uh, feeling like someone who could be the life of the party and the strong friend in those moments. We, we need those moments, that undercover stage. But when you move out of that undercover stage that preparation requires, it's time for you to get into, get into the action of being used to expand God's reign on the earth. Okay? I am excited about this book because I know that it is an extension of God's reign on the earth. It is an invitation for people who have felt unanchored, 
people who have felt like they don't know what their identity is, people who have felt like their identity has always been projected onto them. One of the things I love about this book is that I am asking you questions in this book for you to figure out what is true to you. There are so many people who are living out someone else's idea of who they should be. There are so many people who are living out shame's idea of who they should be. They're living out fear's idea of who they should be. It is time for you to figure out who you are at your core and to present who you are at your core to God and say, now this is who I am. What can you do with this? And I love this because I am not projecting onto you who you should be. I am creating questions and dialogue for you to begin asking yourself, who am I? What is true for you? If there were no expectations, if there were no projections, who would you be if this was your reality? And oh, I just saw, okay, Vanetta's in here. Okay, so listen, guys, I have signed a few copies of this book. If you would like a signed copy of this book, you can go to Talk Shop Live. The link is in my bio on Instagram. You can go on Talk Shop Live and get a signed copy of this book, Power Moves. You can pre-order it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. But if you specifically want a signed copy, go to Talk Shop Live. I think we only have a few left. There's only, I think, maybe 50 of them left. Uh, but if you want those, you can go on there. I'm so glad you said that because I was just going and going. But listen, what this book is going to do is going to help you give yourself language. We talk about creating our core values. We talk about interrogating our systems. What are our systems? Our systems are just those autopilots that we wake up and we're doing the same things, thinking the same things. I want to help you interrogate those pilots, maybe interrogate some of those systems. Maybe some of those systems are meaningful and helpful to you, but maybe some of those systems are actually limiting you. And then we're going to talk about how we break out of those systems. I'm excited about this book. I want you to make sure that you get it. Uh, power moves, ignite your confidence and become a force. You guys have probably seen me talking about this book over and over again. Part of the reason why I'm talking about it over and over again is because I know how difficult it can be for us to take the first step to activate power, to take the first step that we think could maybe change our lives. But I am telling you that when you take the first step with this book, that your life is not going to automatically, just because you clicked on the Amazon card, just up in and become something you've never known. I'm going to walk this journey out with you. When I was writing this book, I was thinking about people who have been, you know, may be comfortable in their worlds, but they know that they're supposed to be doing more than what they have been doing, but they also don't want to destroy their world in the process of becoming. I was thinking about that when I wrote this book. And as a result, I have written a book that I truly believe is going to help you walk out the change that you want to experience in your life without destroying everything in your path. Okay. I feel like it's so important that we recognize that change sometimes is necessary, but change doesn't always have to be heartbreaking. Okay, so I want you guys to get this book. Okay, we did something when I was talking uh, about Woman Evolve a few years ago. I did something once where I told people to just write any page number. So we have 100 and... Let me see, let me see, 194 pages. You all type in the comments, any page, one through 194, I'm going to crack it open and I'm just going to read you an excerpt from the book, any page, one through 194. Um, I want you guys to drop 56. Okay, I see the numbers coming in. Let's see, let's turn to 56. I am going to read an excerpt from this book. Keep them coming. I will scroll back and find them. So 56, this is the ecosystem of you. Um, and let me just see. Um, oh, in this part of the book, I'm talking about interrogating those systems and how we get to the bottom of them. Okay. So I use myself as an example, but it says this, if you're going to move in power, it will disrupt the ecosystem of your world, but it does not have to destroy it. A healthy disruption can create more intimacy and trust 
than staying in the status quo. My intent is not to send you through your world, burning down the ecosystem you love and cherish. And it's so ironic, like I literally was just talking about this. I am asking you to trust that the environment assigned to bring out your destiny cannot function with a diminished expression of who you are. First of all, can we take a minute I am asking you to trust that the environment assigned to your destiny, the destiny that God has for you, has a specific environment connected to it. And that environment only works if you are all of who you are supposed to be. When Adam and Eve are in the garden, the reason why it became such a tragedy is because the woman became a diminished version of who she was supposed to be. She was supposed to have dominion over that serpent, but some kind of way the serpent ended up having dominion over her because she shrunk in the face of what she was facing. But the environment connected to your destiny will require a full version of who you are. That means that if someone can walk away from you for being all of who you're supposed to be in God, those people were not for you. The environment that God has for you, it doesn't function properly unless you have that full version of who you are. Okay. So listen, uh, may God grant you the wisdom to be patient with those who need time to adjust and to distance yourself from those who will destroy your growth. Taking the time to consider yourself is not betrayal, nor is it selfishness. If you don't understand how you work, you can't target where you need to grow, nor can you effectively communicate to people how they can grow and serve you while you develop. Okay, this I, I love this song. You words are like my thing, okay? Like a woman who has finally decided what she wants to eat, there are few things more empowering than being able to identify and qualify the systems that are running your life. Okay, okay. Uh, I see PT. Hi, PT. How are you? This book is on Amazon. I just saw that comment. You can download it. This is Power Moves, Ignite Your Confidence, and Become a Force. Okay, I'm going to just take a few more pages. Um, and let's see. I see 33. I love 33. That's the Jesus year. 33 is a part fully integrated. Um and fully, we're talking about core values. So core values are not meant to restrict. Instead, they are the measuring stick that determines whether an idea, opportunity, expansion, or partnership aligns with the company's founding principles. Uh, so this part of the book is when we begin to create those core values. Once again, I want you to see how quickly we get to that inside of the book. So this is the front cover. This is quickly inside of the book because once your core values have been set, once we begin to do the work of understanding what's valuable, who you are, who you aren't, what has been projected onto you, once we do that work, it's time for you to become a force. It's time for you to introduce that into the world. And so we're beginning to talk about core values in this book, in this chapter of the book. That's on page 33. Um, oh my gosh, it's like, okay. When leaders insist that all decisions filter through core values, a company is able to ensure that everything they create reflects what's most important to them as an organization. This is why it's so important that you understand what your core values are. I saw someone commented, um, they wanted to know, how do I know if someone's destroying my growth? The first thing you have to do is identify where you are growing, identify your growth, and then recognize what type of environment facilitates me growing in this area. You get to ask the question, like, when I'm with this person, do I grow? Does that mean that I'm no longer with this person? No, it doesn't necessarily mean that, but it may mean I'm not going to open up to them about X, Y, and Z. Like, what is an area where you are growing? Being able to give that language and pinpoint it is so important. Okay, I see nine. 94. 94 is in here. I'm going to take a few more. I am talking about my new book, Power Moves, Ignite Your Confidence and Become a Force. I'm so excited about it getting in the hands. Oh, good call, 94. Okay. What gift could you be offering the world that we don't even realize we need? We've got to learn to not be distracted by what looks like fullness so that we don't miss the opportunity to do our part in filling the earth. Let me just say this before you start minimizing what you carry because you think someone else has already brought it to the table. It doesn't matter how many people are doing the thing that you do. If God has laid it on your heart to do it's so that you can fill a spot that's empty. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? 
I'm going to read that again. Because too many of you, I'm not trying to pull your number, but too many of you are thinking that what I offer doesn't matter because I've seen someone else do it. I'm going to just read this for you again. It doesn't matter how many people are doing the thing that you do. If God has laid it on your heart to do, it's so that you can fill a spot that's empty. What I love about this part of the book is I talk about in Genesis. So the first chapter of Genesis, God is talking. We're seeing how God created the heavens and the earth. And we're seeing how he planted trees and herbs and animals. And I imagine him handing them an earth that was completely full. And yet he says to them, feel the earth, feel the earth. But the earth already looks full. How am I supposed to feel it? Feel the earth. Like, okay, maybe we're going to have babies. Like, feel the earth. What else are we supposed to do? He says to feel the earth, build homes. And what does that look like? God leaves it on them to understand that when I say to feel the earth, I am asking you to look beyond what already looks full and to find out what you can offer to an environment that already looks like it needs nothing. Too many of us think that the world doesn't need what we carry because it's already so full. But if you look at this earth and think that it's already so full, you are saying that who God created you to be doesn't matter in the context of this earth. You're saying that God just made you random. You are not random. If you are here, there is an empty spot with your name on it. If you are here, there is a spot in the earth that is empty. You are not just taking up space. You are not just here randomly enjoying life. You have something to feel in the earth. Fill it up, fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. I'm just prophesying that over you all. Fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. It is time for you to become a force. Fill it up, fill it up. There are empty spots in your family, empty spots in your community, empty spots in industries, and you are the only one who can feel that place in the earth. Feel the earth. Feel the earth with my goodness. Feel the earth with my glory. Feel the earth with what I have placed on the inside of you. Where God has filled you, feel the earth with that. I'm not asking you to do what anyone else has done. I'm not asking you to make it look a certain way. I'm not asking you to do it perfectly. I'm just asking you to pour out in the area where you have received. Oh, but I'm still waiting for you to feel me here, even though you feel me there. But start pouring from the place where you have been filled. Start being bold enough to believe that I can pour and still be being filled at the same time. That while I'm pouring, God is filling. That while I'm pouring, God is pouring too. I'm going to use what I have now. I'm not going to wait until I get to a certain level. I'm a force right now. Power moves. Ignite your confidence and become a force. I just posted a video where I was talking about I'm all of that. I'm a work in progress and I'm a masterpiece at the same time. That means that I don't have to wait until my life looks perfect for me to start feeling from the place where I have been filled. It is time for you to feel the earth. And when you feel the earth, the world will make sure that God gets the glory. The world will know for sure that God is still moving. God is still healing. God is still believing. It is time for you to feel the earth. Okay. Um, I see one more page. I'm going to say this. I'm talking about my new book, Power Moves, Ignite Your Confidence and Become a Force. You can get it on wherever books are sold. I have a few signed copies on Talk Shop Live. If you click the link in my bio, uh, you can get access to some signed copies that I have. I only have a few copies left, but I would be glad to share those with whoever uh, would like a signed copy. Okay, I'm turning to page 43. Uh, 43, we did this, we talked about the ecosystem of you. Um, uh, Okay, so the ecosystem of you is when we talk about programming and uh, the way that you're programmed right now and how it could be helpful or how it could be detrimental. And we ask some questions to help you understand how to get there. Okay, I do like this. Okay, it says, one would find it strange if a person made the same meal every day until they looked in the pantry and realized that the person was simply preparing a meal based off the, based off the available ingredients. It's like a college student who eats ramen every night. It's not that they don't have a taste for something else. It's that they are incapable of accessing what they actually have an appetite for. If you have ever found yourself hungry for a version of yourself that you can envision but not access, you are not alone. Can anyone relate to that analogy? Like, I want to be different. 
but I keep producing the same results. I want to start something, but I keep talking myself out of it. I want to do this, but this system that is inside of me, this system doesn't allow me to break out of it. This is when we begin to dissect that system. I love it so much though, because that sentence, if you have ever found yourself hungry for a version of yourself that you can envision, but not access, you are not alone. I started feeling this way Man, probably in 2011, I'm like, I think I think I could do better than this, but I don't know how to change my ways. I don't know how to change my actions. I don't even know where to begin. That is part of why I wanted to write this book because I started looking at my life and I wanted to backtrack because honestly, it feels like, and I feel this for someone, it feels like what God did in my life happened overnight. But I know that it didn't happen overnight. And so this book very much so was therapeutic for me because it was my opportunity to backtrack and figure out, God, how did you do this? Like, how did you take the girl who like she didn't think she was anything? She didn't think she could offer anything. She didn't think she had any value. And now, you know, there are times when I preach and people are like, you're such a powerhouse. You're so powerful. How, what happened? What were the steps? I went back and backtracked. I did the steps. And I can tell you that one of the things that I started recognizing is that I was hungry. It started with a hunger. If you're watching this live and there's a hunger on the inside of you, you're hungry for a version of yourself, you can almost feel it. You can almost feel the confidence that that person would have. You can almost feel the spiritual sensitivity that you would have, but you just can't access it. It feels like I'm close, but I'm so far away. I believe that this book is going to help you uncover how to access that person. I'm going to read just a little bit more from page 43. It says, when you take the time to cultivate the core values that align with the most powerful version of who you are. You are changing your appetite. But when you get ready to live those values out, you have to change what's in your pantry. Otherwise, you'll have an appetite for a version of yourself that you're not equipped to produce. You have to do the work of implementing systems that make your core values easily attainable. So in this book, we're going to talk about the core value. That person, that person that you sense you could become, what's important to them? Like what type of decisions do they make? What are their character traits? That they, they have wisdom? Are they humble? Um, are they confident? Are they assertive? Like let's start listing those core values. We literally have this in the book where you will be able to list those core values of that person. Okay, so now we have a target. For the, for the values that that person that I sense I could become, I have a target for those values. But now what systems create that goal? Because if right now my system just makes me afraid, my system makes me shrink, my system tells me I'm not smart enough, I have to attach a belief to that core value. So if that value is I am intelligent, I can be anytime I'm walking around telling myself I'm dumb, I'm always going to land on dumb because I have not changed the system to align with the value. But when I have the value, I can change the system. I have to change the way that I speak. I have to change who I'm talking to. Sometimes I'm connected with people who reinforce my insecurity. But because I'm getting ready to change and walk into who I am supposed to be in God, I have to change the system that keeps creating that same outcome. Systems are meant to produce outcomes. If you are not happy with the outcome of where you are right now, you can't just say, oh, well, I'm going to have a new outcome as a goal. No, you have to be willing to say, no, I actually need a new system because this system keeps producing the same outcome. What are the systems in your life that continue to produce the same outcome? We're going to interrogate them. We're going to tear them up if we have to, so that we can get to an outcome that aligns with who God already destined you to become. We're not asking God to do something that God hasn't already wanted to do in your life. Do you understand that? Like part of what we are doing in this book, I talk about worship. I talk about being made in the image of Christ. I talk about how our spirit has to undergo a transformation so that we can get there. What you are hungry for, if you are hungry for a version of yourself that is full of the spirit, that is showing the fruit of the spirit, you're confident, you're powerful, your worth is not connected to what you do. If you're hungry for that version of yourself, God placed that hunger on the inside of you and God wants to fill you up so you can fill the earth. 
When God fills you up, you can fill the earth. When you make it your mission to become more like Jesus from the inside out, you're not just a doer, you are someone who has become. And when you begin to become, you have to recognize you are a force. Can I just tell you for a minute that all hell has been breaking out against us and our camp because we recognize that the message of this book is quite literally targeting the enemy's camp. We are targeting the enemy's head. We are coming for people who have been living beneath God's word. They have been living beneath God's standard for far too long. And it is time for them to make a shift. And when you make this shift, you will be a force in the earth. You are meant to be a force in the earth. And being a force in the earth is not about how many followers you have. It's not about how popular you are. Being a force in the earth is when the enemy recognizes that that person means war. That is somebody who is going to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. When you see this, them, you're going to know that light is going to shine. You were meant to shine and anything that is coming up against that light, God is going to declare war with, and I am going to back up heaven and what heaven wants to do with you in this book. So I want to encourage you to get this book. I'm so excited about it. Um, you could have never told me, I can't reiterate this enough. You could have never told me that I would ever be in a position where someone would be telling me things like, I felt God working through you. I felt closer to Jesus as a result of what you preached. Like you made me hungry to become more and more of who God knows. I never thought that that would be attached to my name. I didn't think I was a force because the power of shame, the power of rejection, the power of insecurity and adequacy, it had its grip on me. Like it had its grip on me tight and it was working. And I had just come into this place where I agreed with shame. I came to a place where I agreed with my anxiety. I agreed with my depression. I agreed with my scars. And when you are in a place where you agree with your scars, you never get to experience true healing. You never get to experience true resurrecting power. Part of the reason why I love my scars so much is because they taught me, but they didn't kill me. Part of the reasons why I love my scars so much is because they are evidence that what the enemy meant for evil, God meant it for good. Part of the reasons why I love my scars so much, it's not because they were always easy to love. It's not because I always understood everything I was going through. It's not because I felt like, oh my gosh, I know God's going to use this. It's because my scars taught me how good God is. My scars taught me what Jesus can do if we're willing to just lay ourselves out and say, if there's a chance that you're still touching people, that you're still healing people, that you're still transforming people, then God used me. That I just wanted Jesus. I just wanted to be saved. I just wanted to be saved from my shame, saved from my pain. I didn't want to be a force. I didn't know that this is what happens, but God told me this is everyone's inheritance. I didn't do anything special for you. I made everyone to be a force. I made everyone to be someone who can reflect my glory on the earth. And the greatest trick that the enemy has played on any of us is that we have become a reflection of what we have gone through and not a reflection of the one who has created us. But when we decide, regardless of what I've gone through, I can still be a reflection of God. I can still be a reflection of his image on the earth. I recognize that he can still move through me and with me when I surrender to that. When I accept the beauty of that responsibility, that God knows exactly who I am. Like I have one of the things I'm most grateful for is that saying yes to who God called me to be didn't require me to become someone I wasn't. Like, I'm still the same girl. Like, I'm still able to do it with authenticity. I'm still able to do it with honor because God knew who I was. God knew who I was and he still chose me. God knew who I was and he says, I can use you as a force. Each of us have a specific lane. We are called to be a force in this world. And where God positions you may be different than where God positions me, but it doesn't change the fact that you have a position. I want to help be a part of the wind that positions you. I want to help you make a power move that ignites your confidence, not your arrogance, not your pride, that ignites your confidence. It says, I can be imperfect. I don't have to have it all together. And I trust that God can still use me. I want to do that. I want to show you how to make that happen. And so I'm excited about this book. 
I'm excited about what God has already decided to do through this book. Um, I'm excited for you to have this revelation about power that allows for power to flow through you. And I want to encourage you to go and get it right now. Like, please, as soon as this live is over, I will save this live. But I want to encourage you to go and pre-order this book. You can get it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, indie bookstores, wherever books are sold. And if you go to the powermovesbook.com, you can start reading the first three chapters right now. Like you don't have to wait. You can start reading the first three chapters. I am excited about this book because I feel like it is one of the most practical, um, practical, but also relatable books about becoming a force that reflects God's glory on the earth that um, I'm just really proud of the way God's given it to me. I have had, I'll tell you this real quick and then I will actually get off. Um, when I first started writing the book, I started feeling a lot of insecurity. And I recognized pretty early on that a lot of that insecurity was connected to the enemy trying to trick me into releasing the book, the enemy trying to make me believe that this book wouldn't matter. And so if you see me pushing this book, you see me talking about this book, please know that it is an act of resistance against the enemy because I trust what God has given me. And I trust that the moment that it is in your hands, that it's going to radically change your life. And I am by faith out here making sure that everyone knows about this book because God gave me a vision on what was going to happen when this book was in your hands. And I want to make sure that it is in the hands of every person who needs it. My new book, Power Moves, in less than two weeks, if you order it now, you can make sure that you have it. The moment that it comes out, that's part of the reason why pre-order is so important is that you make sure that this book is available to you when you need it and you don't forget it in your cart. Um, you can get it at uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever books are sold. I want to pray though for somebody who's, um, I'm going to say it like this, whose force has been under attack, whose identity as a force has been under attack. If that's you, I just want you to type in the comments. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. You're starting to maybe settle into an existence that makes you feel like maybe you're just regular or just ordinary. Um, maybe you don't see your special. That's what it is. Maybe you don't see your special. You don't understand why God has chosen you or if God has chosen you. You don't see it, but God does. I want you to just write, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. Your power is under attack. If you are having these questions, I want you to know that your power is under attack. The power that you have access to is under attack, trying to convince you that it is not effective, trying to convince you that it doesn't matter, trying to talk you out of your inheritance as a king's kid, your inheritance as a child of God. God is all powerful, all knowing, ever present. And you're a child of God. Certainly you have human DNA, but you got some divine DNA too. And it's time for that divine DNA to begin showing up. Yes, Rosemary, I see you it's praying for the environments we're in as well. Environments that are threatening that anointing that's on your life. Mm. Uh, I saw someone say, I don't understand if I'm chosen. I do feel I'm under attack. If you're under attack, you're probably chosen. If you're under attack, because attack is not just for people who don't have anything to offer. Attack is not for people who don't carry light. Attack is to keep you from getting to that place of knowing, that place of confidence, that place of reassurance. I don't want to see Holy Spirit, God, I, God, I lift your name. I thank you, God, for who you are in the earth. Thank you, God, for being all powerful. Thank you, God. You place the stars in the sky. You set the ocean in motion, God. You created every planet, the universe, the solar system, God. You spoke it into existence, God. I thank you for allowing that same breath 
to be breathed inside of our lungs. I thank you, God, for the divine idea that is the person who's watching this live right now. God, I'm praying right now that even in this moment as I'm praying, that your presence would begin to seep into their atmosphere, that your presence would begin to engulf them. I thank you, God, that you can create an environment within an environment. I thank you, God, that your anointing knows no bounds, that your presence knows no limits, that you can be in Nigeria and California at the same time, that you can be in Dallas and New York at the same time. God, I'm praying for a divine impartation, that it would begin to permeate our atmosphere right now, God. I rebuke in the name of Jesus the spirit of fear. I rebuke in the name of Jesus the spirit of rejection and abandonment. I rebuke right now in the name of Jesus, the spirit of inadequacy. I rebuke it, not just the feelings of fear, not just the feelings of anxiety, but the spirit of anxiety that has haunted and tormented and plagued those who are watching on this live for far too long. And I plead the blood of Jesus over them, the blood of Jesus that makes up the difference, the blood of Jesus that says, I shall not allow any death to pass over this soul. I plead the blood blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus that will make them whole, the blood of Jesus that will allow them to create, to experience a new normal. I believe the blood of Jesus that will cleanse them white as snow. And I thank you, God, that you gave us another option. I thank you, God, that you don't leave us in our mess. I thank you, God, that you don't leave us in betrayal. You don't leave us in heartbreak. You don't leave us in abandonment, that you are not finished. And so I prophesy right now in the name of Jesus that somebody is about to get back on the line, that somebody is going to get back in your workshop, that someone is going to get back into a space and into a headspace of beginning to seek you out. God, I thank you for placing hunger down on the inside of those who are watching, hunger to be made whole, hunger to know you in a deeper, more vibrant way, God. And I thank you that as that hunger is deposited on the inside of them, that you will fill them to the overflow. I thank you, God, that you are not a man that you should lie and what you began, you will complete in their lives. And I thank you, God, right now for anything that is not for them breaking off of them in the name of Jesus. I decree it and declare it right now. If they are, if there is a person, an opportunity, a circumstance that is in their life that is pulling them into darkness, that is pulling them into despair, I ask that you would break it right now in the name of Jesus. Highlight it, oh God. Highlight it right now in the name of even as situations are coming to their mind. God, I thank you that you are highlighting situations and scenarios that are a threat to who you have called them to be. And I thank you that them stepping into their God-given identity is not going to be hard. I hear God saying that it is harder for you to be who you are not than it is going to be for you to step into who you are. I got to say that better. I hear God saying that it is more difficult for you to shrink than it is for you to stand tall. I hear God saying that it's not going to be as hard as you think it all, think it is. I hear God saying that it's not going to be as devastating as you think it is. I hear God saying that when you stand up, that you're going to realize that you have been shrunk for too long, that when you stand up, that you're going to realize that there's confidence in standing up, there's joy in standing up, there's peace in standing up. And so God, I ask that they would straighten out their limbs, that they would straighten out their back, that they would square their shoulders and begin to walk in the knowledge that you are not finished and that they must partner with you to finish, God that they must partner with you and begin to make those choices that reflect the work that you want to do in their lives. God, I thank you for this book. I thank you that you gave me a divine download. God, I thank you that I wrestled over it. I thank you that I fought for it. I thank you that I cried for it. And I believe, God, that it is anointed. I speak, God, even now that you would rearrange the words, that you would make sure their hearts are 